Okay. Yes. That's can you see it now? Yes, that's what I can see. All right. Okay. So yeah. So my uh, uh, question is: Is an influence an important part in comparative literature? Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, I started to give an introduction about uh, the Bible, this question. And uh, for example, I said when I read some famous works of some famous writers such as Henry Fielding and his novel Joseph Andrews, William Shakespeare and his play Macbeth, and Ahmad Khani is one of the Kurdish writers in fact in, in Iraq. Uh, he wrote uh, a love story called Man and Zeen. Man uh, is the name of a boy, and Z is the name of a girl. So mm. they have the same ending exactly as uh, we have in uh, Romeo and Juliet, in fact. And uh, uh, the, the love story is, is very close to, 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 the lo to the love story of uh, 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 the, the, the Kurdish writer with the English writer. But the environment is different, you know, mm. and the, the, the context is different. It's in, in, in Iraq and and England, so two different, for example, you know, countries and places. So uh, here, I, I said, I said that my question was, you know, you know centered on that. Uh, who who has been affected by the other? Mm. I mean, an influence. Who has been influenced by the other? And who uh, who, for example, uh, uh, was the love of uh, such a literary work? Motivated the other, or motivated the, 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 the writer to write something about uh, to write uh, about the same idea, for example. Yeah. So, uh, I in my in my first slide, you know, uh, I, I I discussed about 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 this idea. If we go to the to the uh, slide number four, I started to uh, to speak something about plagiarism. Plagiarism, in fact. And the role of plagiarism in uh, in writing. The, the rule of what? Plagiarism. Plagiarism. Mm. Yeah, 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 the role of plagiarism, and uh, it's the same the same thing that when I said uh, we have imitation and plagiarism, and influence. Mm. We have three things. So I I started to to to, to give a definition to or to, to three of these of these uh, terms, in fact. Hmm. In order to in order to show that in order to show that this is not a plagiarism and this is hmm. not uh, this is it could be this could be, this could be, this could be this or this could be uh, as we say imitation. Hmm. And then I move to slide number uh, five uh, to obtain scientific uh, uh, satisfactory answer concerning the role of influence. We must study uh, and see what does. Comparative literature means. So I went to, to num uh, uh, slide number six, which is the definition of the comparative literature according to uh, one of the very famous you know, science uh, uh, scholars, Ramak. I uh, I gave a definition uh, uh, of uh, of uh, I defined the, you know uh, the, the comparative literature according to Ramak. Mm. After that, I went to. Uh, to go into some details uh, about uh, the uh, schools who, who who has been concentrated on, who has been focused on influence, mm. and one of the one of the schools who has uh, concentrated and focused on influence was the school was, was the French school, mm. and in uh, uh, in slide number seven, I gave some introduction about the the, the French school and the rules of the French Parliament. When this uh, and the, the original uh, starting of the uh, French school. Mm. In slide number uh, uh, ten, I gave uh, I went to some principles of this school. So we, uh, 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 studying the French school should should should, should uh, I should start with the, uh, the the French school, the origin of the French school, then the principles of the French school. Mm. In slide number. Uh, uh, let's say uh, eleven. Uh, the French school, in fact, uh, yeah, it classified and it goes into uh, the two types, which is uh, the literary and non-literary influence and direct and influence, 
direct. I mentioned two of them. And uh, then uh, I went to uh, slide number 12, which is uh, I choose one of the one of the uh, pullers uh, under the name of Matthew Arnold. And this is, is, is a very famous statement in, uh, at the University of Oxford in, in 1857. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, concerning uh, then, uh, then I gave uh, an explanation to, 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 uh, the, to the role of the scholars and uh, some ideas of the scholars about, about influence. Uh, uh, if I, if I, uh, and finally, uh, in, in slide number 15, in, this, in slide number 15, I started to talk about my idea, my thoughts about the role of influence in the text uh, and in the, the literary works. And I gave my, my, you know, my opinion about, about uh, some of uh, the two works, uh, for example, the, the, the work of Mamouzi and the, 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 the works of uh, 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 Romeo and, jo and Juliet, and also uh, uh, I, I mentioned another example about uh, one of the, the very famous books called The Arabian Nights, mm. and uh, 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 and another another uh, writing by uh, one of the Italian uh, uh, writers. Uh, his name is Giovanni. Tafaccio, uh, I'm not sure if it's a uh, hospital name correct. And uh, they, uh, first of all, when, when you read uh, Arabian Nights, it's a collection of stories. Mm -hmm. Has been collected in one book. And the same, the same, the same idea has been performed by an, uh, by, by an Italian, uh, an, Italian an Italy uh, a writer uh, called uh, Giovanni, I'm not sure if, uh, how to spell it in fact. Uh, uh, correct. Uh, uh, so my question is, which one influenced the other? Mm. So I start. I started to 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 give my opinion in the last uh, in the in, in the uh, uh, exactly slide number number fifteen. Uh, I gave my opinion about that, and I said that uh, influence, in fact, is something uh, is is. Uh, we, we could not say that this writer influenced that writer because the literary text, as Matthew Arnold, as uh, one of the, as uh, Matthew Arnold said, uh, uh, and in his very famous statement that uh, to some extent that, that all writings, to some extent, uh, and in different ways are connected to each other. Mm. So because it's a it's a it's a it's a literary work. So it, it has a connection with the it has a, uh, with the, with the, with the another text, but uh, the question that stayed in my mind that and I, I didn't find the answer for that. For mm. example, let's say uh, Mamouzin has been written, or the Kurdish writer Mamouzin uh, Ahmad Khani has, uh, uh, for example, has written his uh, famous love story Mamouzin. In uh, and the difference between Mamouzin and Romeo uh, and Juliet is about a century exactly, one hundred years. It's, 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 97 to 100 years. Mm. So, uh, and they, at that time, there, there, there wasn't what we call it the information technology, like uh, mobile, like uh, internet, like mm -hmm. things like that. And even books, even the first half of books. So, my question is, uh, the difference is one century. So, uh, and that the person who who has written uh, Ahmad Khan, who has written uh, Mamoudin was in Iraq and he was, he was living in a village. Mm. So uh, it will be impossible to, to, to think that he has, he has been affected by William Shakespeare at that time. Mm. Mm. And, and they wrote the same love story. Mm. At the end of, 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 the, of the love story, both the lover didn't reach you know, each other and uh, they died before getting you know, engaged or getting, before getting married. So this question, you know, stuck in my mind and I didn't find an answer for that. But when I returned back to uh, the, the, uh, Matthew Arnold and his, his very famous statement, I came to the conclusion that all the uh, literary work and text are usually, as you said, uh, are, are connected to each other because they are literary works.
Yes, that's all. That's all. Is that all? Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Um, okay, before I forget, all right. First thing to do, um, I, I will suggest some recommendation. Uh, first thing to do is to insert the header and the footer here so that you know when you say number slide number one, slide number two, it's easier, you know, to, to refer to because then it's there. Okay, exactly. so include. Sorry? Where is going to be? Uh, where, where can I uh, uh, insert? Insert. Head up. insert. Yeah. And then you yes. go to header and footer. Yes. Uh, I, I usually like to put footer. You can just put slide number, but I also like to put footer because then I can put my references here. Yeah. So, so for instance, what, uh, so for instance, when you quote uh, Matthew Arnold, when you quote Matthew Arnold, where is that quotation from? You put, put, put the entire reference. That's the first yes. thing to do. Yes. The second yes. thing is, the entire thing is a quotation. You need to put it in inverted commas because these are not your words. Yes, if you right. have paraphrased them, that's okay. If you haven't paraphrased them, you have to put that the quotation mark. Otherwise, you are considered to plagiarize Matthew Arnold. So I didn't tell that. For, I didn't, you know, uh, I I, I uh, paraphrased them. I didn't, you know, you know, this, give the this same whole thing words. is paraphrase. These are your words? Yes, yes, yes. I will check. This is how I, I check. This is I how I check. So, so if I put the words here and content, I don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I good. Content. That's good. That's good. If I, if I copy and paste the whole thing and I don't find any hits, that means these are your words. So if these are your words, then, you know, of course you don't need to put the inverted commas. But reference, it, put a reference where you got that from, okay? Okay, let, let's start from the beginning. All right, first of all, I really like the question. I, I, I like the, the start, the question that you have uh, included in here. Uh, so uh, the, the thing that I would uh, focus on is what does the word influence mean in this presentation? Uh, if you think about it in your own context, you know, if somebody is influencing you, Maybe the person is doing it through their speech, through their actions, through their everyday choices. But in the context of your discussion here, the influence is in the form of storytelling, in the form of character development, in the form of conflicts, in the form of uh, narrative, uh, uh, narrative techniques and uh, narrative uh, as a strategy, that's what you mean by the word influence here, right? So is influence an important part of storytelling as well as is influence an important part of reading comparative literature, reading literature across time and space? So the question, you need to spend a little bit time, a little bit of time to dis discuss what this word means. That's the first thing you need to incorporate. You the mean second you mean expanding thing. the influence. Say that again. You mean expanding the, the, the yes the yes influence. yes. So which means before you put the thesis, this is so this is like this is your thesis statement. Yes. Okay. So this is your thesis statement. Nah, -uh, this is your research question. Okay, so this is your research question. But what is your thesis statement? You need to start with a bit of a background 
of study. How did you develop this? So all this is part of the background of study. All this is part of the background of study. So this is you positioning yourself when you're reading these famous works, uh, what questions come to mind, what thoughts come to mind. So that's, that's part of um, uh, the background of study. And further from that, uh, and, and this is also part of your background of study. So this is your thesis statement. Okay. Yes. Doctor. And this is your research question. So you're trying to prove, maybe I will change it a little bit. To what extent is influence an important aspect Much in the discipline C I S C I P L I N E of comparative literature? Because if you say is, if you ask the question, is the answer is simple, yes or no? That's it. Kalas, yes, finish. Sure, sure, sure. So you want the question to be open ended. You don't want the question to be too limiting. Huh? Okay, so so once you've got the question, then you go straight into the discussion. Okay, now before that, um, I need to draw your attention to the assignment. What is the course asking from all of you? Uh, the, the, the assignment requires you to answer a particular issue or to deal with a particular uh, topic. Oops, okay. The question is, um, using three critical essays, conduct a review of the discipline of comparative literature, okay? And this review is to kind of compare the 20th century with the 21st century. So you need to Talk about this, uh, uh, the discussion of the French school, the Eastern school, the, the Anglo-American school, whatever, not just from the perspective of the 20th century, but also from the perspective of the 21st century. So if I look at your presentation, if I looked at your presentation, Um, which article is about the 21st century? So this is 1993. Uh, when was this? Uh, you mean the year? Yes. Uh, you need to use... Because you need to show... You need to show, your references need to show readings that are not just of the 20th century, but also of the 21st century. So it is important um, uh, for the review, for the, con uh, for the assignment, for you to demonstrate uh, not just the 20th century discussion, but also the 21st century ones. Okay? So that's the bit that is still missing in your, in your uh, presentation. The readings, if any of these are from the 21st century, that's fine. I, I'm not sure when they are, so you need to get the dates. Okay? I think most of them are, Doctor, most of them are, you know, uh, 2000 and, and over. Uh, uh, not let's not just but I, I do believe that one of them is uh, in 19... Uh, can you see the screen that I'm sharing right now? Yeah, 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 I'm seeing. And yeah. number, in Susan Bassnett, 1993. Just, just yes. So, so I need, I need to see the references. So another, another thing I want to focus on is, how do you do referencing? Yeah. So you need to put the author's name, 
but the author's name would be surname followed by the first name. Yeah. Okay. The year, the title, and the publishing, the publishing uh, details. Uh, place yeah. of publication. Place of publication and publisher. This has to be the same uh, format for referencing for all these other articles. Okay, that. All right. Um, uh, so, so if I was going to use um, Bassnet, yeah, if I was going to use Bassnet to pick up on Matthew Arnold's quote, for instance, then I would put Bassnet's uh, reference here. Oh, sorry, and it has to be italicized. The title must be in italic. Yes. The book title. If it's journal articles, no need. But book titles, you have to put it in italics. So I'm recording all this and sharing it later with everybody so that you all can, can learn from this, uh, from this as well. Sure, so sure. if I'm taking this quote, and if this quote is, is from Susan Bassnett's uh, book, yeah. Then I would put the reference here to, to indicate where this idea is from. So I would do the same for all the other pages that you have included here. That's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, so for instance, the definition of comparative literature. Yeah, the main principles, uh, the definitions, um, uh, the, the details of the French school and, and all the rest of that. So, so the, the conclusion before you sum, uh, so, so the conclusion is you are still looking at a text. You are still looking at the text that is um, from, it, it's, no, uh, the, all right, sorry, let me rephrase this. Is this your idea or? Yes, my this idea is, exactly about. I think the two the Kurdish writer and Shakespeare. This is originally your idea. You didn't read this from somewhere. No, no, no. It's my idea. Okay. If this is your idea, then I say don't put it in here. Use it for the second assignment. Okay. Don't don't put it for the first assignment. Use save it for the second assignment. Because for the second assignment for the seminar. That allows you to discuss the, the issue of comparative literature and national literary canon uh, across time and space, across national borders. Then you get to bring in these two, cop these two texts that you have identified. And you can talk about it. You can talk about the difference in time, uh, the difference in cultural context. One is an Iraqi, uh, a Kurdish writer in an Iraqi village. Uh, another one is an Englishman. Uh, you know, one is in the um, 16th century, and another one is in the 17th century. And then you can you can talk about. So I would say, don't bring all this in. Uh, don't don't incorporate this. So my suggestion is. Delete it. This blue bit, keep it yeah. for uh, uh, for assignment. So let me see. Yeah, huh? I'm going to copy this. I'm going to delete. So okay, um, ideas for seminar. I will save what. Uh, uh, what you have done. I will save what you have done here. Okay, that, uh, this is okay. this is for the second assignment. So so don't give everything, don't reveal everything at this point. The same with here. So I would say take all this and this is ideas for the seminar. So you already have uh, ideas for your second assignment. For so this assignment, which is due uh, week nine, you already have some ideas already. So this is already a good start. Okay. Uh, so, so, which which still leaves you with a conclusion. 
So the conclusion is, um, based on the scholars that you have read, based on the scholars that you have read, what can you conclude about the issue of plagiarism, uh, about the issue of uh, influence and imitation? And and imitation. So, um, no. So if I, uh, uh, if I um, visualize uh, the three uh, uh, issues, if I visualize. If I visualize uh, plagiarism, uh, uh, influence, and imitation, I, I think visually. I don't like slides that has lots of words like this. I don't like because that's not yeah, that's not exactly. the kind of a learner I am. I like to think things visually, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So if I thought of things visually, you know, so I will use this design ideas because I like my pre presentation to be more um, engaging okay. like this. Okay, so plagiarism, influence, imitation. How do they converge? Uh, how do they connect to each other? When is an influence just an imitation? When is an influence a crime? i.e. plagiarism, because this is a crime to commit, to, to, to take someone's work. Uh, to imitate someone's work is, is almost like a, a kind of a flattery because you are trying to compliment them and you want to say, you know, sometimes younger siblings, they imitate their older siblings, you know, the way they dress, the way they speak, because they feel they adore their older brother or sister, right? So imitation is not a crime. But it can be annoying because you don't seem to have a voice. You're just copying someone else's uh, way of doing things. But when you copy it verbatim, completely, you just change the name of the character. This is plagiarism. This is a crime. But yeah. then there is there is a, a, a something else called influence. So I would say this, I would duplicate this. This can be part of your thesis statement. Okay, this is this can be part of your hypothesis, and you can conclude with it as well. So then you see there is connection, you know, there is a connection between how you started your presentation, the introduction, the I, the the background of study. And, and, you know, the thesis statement and the research question and, and explanation and the discussion and how you conclude it. That's, that's what is needed for a good video essay. You know, the, it's like a telling a story. You have a middle, uh, you have a beginning, you have a middle, you have an end. Okay. Uh, uh, does that answer the question? Yeah, sure. I will save this and I will send it back to you. So you can uh, uh, you can uh, expand on that. So so uh, you you've got you've got the bulk of what you're trying to do. You've got it already. So this is good. Uh, what you need to do is uh, tighten it a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, with citation, with um, don't make it too wordy. Salim, make it more fun. Make it more engaging. Uh, make your presentation not so uh, uh, wordy, you know, because when you put too many words on the slide, it doesn't become a video essay. It just becomes an essay. Yeah. So, so you may keep all those words. So I would say have the words with you like notes. You may read the words, but on the PowerPoint, show some images, some, some uh, icons, maybe just a short quote. Just a short few words, but don't put the entire paragraphs there, because then your audience will will be 
uh, will have to read what's there. It will be get, it will be boring for them. They will get bored, and they will end up having to read it. But what's the point of having a video if I'm going to read it? Might as well just give me the essay. Do you understand? So the the reason I'm asking all of you to do this is I'm challenging you as a literary student. I'm challenging you. Uh, to demonstrate that these ideas that you have in your mind, you can transfer it in different formats. In a yeah, format yeah. of an essay, in a format of a, a seminar presentation, an oral presentation, which is what your second assignment will be about, but also in a format of a video essay. Okay? So, so I'm showing you one example uh, of a video essay uh, to, to, uh, uh, to demonstrate. Okay. You always hear people saying, that's him. Uh, just to demonstrate. Yeah. So this is a video essay. This is an example of a video essay. Okay, so this this video essay, this video essay, you know. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing the screen. Oh Lord, mm. <laughs> I'm talking. I'm I'm sharing. Uh, uh, I thought I was sharing the screen. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, so this uh, uh, YouTuber by by the um, uh, channel name of Movie Flame. Uh, you see he's got 1.39 million subscribers. Um, I like this uh, YouTuber because he does a lot of different uh, um, reviews of books, of TV series, of movies, of various, various uh, popular culture uh, uh, texts, you know. And, and the way he presents his uh, review... It's very focused, it's very concise. And it is in the form of a video essay. Meaning, instead of giving you the journal paper or the, the article, he presents it to you. He presents it to you in a form of a video. So he will have uh, clips from the movies. He will have uh, his own face uh, talking to you directly into the camera, as you will see. But what I want to draw your attention is... Um, how he presents it. The, the format may be, may be uh, more digital and more technologically uh, advanced, but how he presents it, the things that he says, the thesis statement that he, he draws uh, uh, from the presentation is at the very beginning of his presentation. So let's see. I hope you can hear it. We'll see. Can you hear any audio? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. Just let's see whether whether you catch what he says. Can I? Okay, that was the thesis statement. Did you catch what he said? What this video is about? In fact, I have to return back to it uh, again and when, you, and when I finish you know, the, the consultation session. This, uh, this, this, this is what he yeah. says. The, the, song, uh, the, the voice is not, is not okay with me. That was an introduction. The first 46 seconds, the first 46 seconds, you see the, the, the timer here. 
the first 46 seconds, he, he gives his statement, his personal statement. Now he is going to tell you the thesis statement. In this video, I'm going to discuss what? That's the thesis statement. Okay. And that comes within the first minute. And the rest of the video, you know, 24 minutes, the rest of the video is about how the thesis statement uh, uh, is presented, how he, uh, the, he the, the way he analyzes in order to prove the thesis statement. And then, then there is a conclusion. He will wrap up coming back to the thesis statement. So this is one format of a video essay. Okay. So I, the reason I'm showing it to you is a video essay is basically what you are doing right now. So if I am here with you and I share the screen like this, I share the screen. Okay. Um, uh, say this is this is a lecture I I presented uh, uh, before this. Uh, this is this is something I was working on. This is a lecture I presented. So uh, if I go through my slides and I present my slides and I talk about uh, I talk about the things that I have prepared here, and then I record it, and then I use the recording. I upload the recording uh, on on. Uh, I upload the recording on my YouTube channel. Okay, I have a YouTube channel. So I, I, I upload my recording here in this button. Can you see the button on my right, top right hand corner? No, that's okay. Oh, good Lord. Did I just, oh, I'm so clever. I apologize. I, I keep forgetting I switched off the stop sharing button. Okay. Okay, so, so imagine you have done the, the presentation, you have recorded it using uh, Google Meet like this. Yeah. Okay, so imagine you've done that. Uh, you will get a notification in your email. You will get a notification saying that this, this is the recording. You get this notification. Okay? Yes. You will download this. You download this note, you will download this video. Okay, you download this video here, download it. Yeah. And and you use this video, you put it up on your YouTube channel here. Create upload here. Yeah. you upload your video. You take you take the video that you downloaded just now, you select that file. Uh, so let me find the file. So this is this is just as a sample, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's what I So and then you can change the title. You can put in a a, a, a picture here. I usually use uh, Canva to this to put a picture. This is not important. All those things are cosmetic. But you go, you click next. You click next, and then next, and then next, and here save or publish, you click unlisted or you click public. You choose, but don't click yeah. private because it's private. I cannot get it. I cannot yeah, sure. watch it. So I How usually... Is... Yes? Uh, yeah, shall I use unlisted is much better, you mean? Sorry? Uh, uh, shall I use unlisted or a public? If you if you feel that what you are sharing is a research idea you don't want to share yet because you want to publish it as a journal paper later, yeah. you don't want to share it and somebody else takes that idea and writes a journal paper and, yeah. and publishes it before you, then you put it unlisted. But if you're doing a review and this, this review is something you want more people to share, you know, as Muslims, you know, uh, the more people... Uh, learn from you and yes. and and Much learn better. what you teach them you get the baraka for it right yeah. so my my philosophy is i want people to access it i want people to use it whatever i prepare 
uh, you 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 can use it all you want because I know my 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 maker will give me the baraka both in this world and in the next. So that's my my philosophy as an educator. So I would usually put it as public, except supervision with my PhD students and master students because these are research that has not completed yet. And, and I don't want somebody else to use the same research idea for their own PhD thesis because then my students' thesis will no longer be original. So for that, I usually keep unlisted. But otherwise, our classwork, whatever, I make it public so that other people can learn um, from my mistakes as well as from the things we do good. So I, I will click public and I will publish. And then YouTube will do the rest. Once it's done, you have the link, you copy the link, you send the link to me on UKM Folio. That's it. That's a video essay. So you can speak to, to the camera. You can, if you have a, a blackboard or a whiteboard at home, or a, a, if you can go to your office and you want to write something and you want to talk, you can, you can use your phone and just record what you say. It's all up to you how you do it. Uh, so it doesn't matter uh, the format that you do. What matters is the content of what you want to say. Okay? So your content is more important than how technologically advanced is your video essay. Don't worry about that. The other details. Sorry? Sorry? You mean the context? The, the, the content is more important than the other details. The, the content of your presentation, what you want to say, is more important than how beautiful your video essay is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. your video essay might look very nice, but if there is nothing there, there is no no content, then I cannot give you any marks. You know, right. so so. I would say focus more on what you want to say, which is which you already have. Actually, all of you, you've got very, all of you have very good ideas. Uh, so now it's just a matter of presenting it. How do you want to present your ideas? Make it less wordy on the page. So take all these points, keep it in your hand as notes. You may read from it. You may want to show something else on the PowerPoint and then keep clicking next page, next slide, next slide. Every slide you put, you may have notes in your hand that you are reading from. That's okay. But don't put all the notes on the video because then it makes it look uh, not as interesting. Okay? But I like what you have to say about the influence. I like that very much. Just one more uh, comment before I forget. Uh, uh, the influence about Prophet Yusuf, that is a little bit out of topic in this presentation. Find, yeah. uh, find uh, examples of influence that scholars are talking about, that, that other, other scholars you know, in the published material, they are talking about. Uh, uh, look at uh, influence that Shakespeare has had on... Um, uh, you know, fictions and, and plays from other contexts, from the African context, from the Indian context, maybe even the Chinese context. But it has to be published works, not your original work. Your original work, keep it for some, uh, second assignment. Yes, okay? So this assignment is, is just a review of other people's works. So, so nothing original. The only original is the thesis statement that you are developing. That's your original take on it. But the content, the, the uh, issues that is being problematized, all that comes from the journal articles or books or book chapters that you are reading. So there must be a separation. Uh, in your mind, there are two different skills. One is to review, to synthesize. And the second, the, the second assignment is to develop something new. The third assignment, the same, to develop something new. But before you can do that, you need to see how other people are approaching the topic. And that's what assignment one is about. Okay? Thank you, Doctor. All right, any questions? Yeah, in fact, it was supposed uh, for me to do 
uh, mistakes like that uh, at, the, in, uh, at the beginning and the starting uh, semester, my first semester. And in the system in Iraq, uh, let me tell you, is quite different from the from what we are what we are doing in, in Malaysia now. Oh. Uh, that's why it was supposed for me to to do like uh, like these mistakes better. And so I'll, I'll try to do my best to. You, know, you are doing, you, all of you, all of you are doing awesome stuff, you know, uh, and, and I think you are meeting the challenge, especially as a first semester student, you know, quite a few of you are first semester students. You are meeting the challenge head on. You're, you're doing, you're, you're, you're doing very well. And I'm just here to say, you know, there is ways and, and means to improve further. And that's, that's what we're doing. Hopefully, by the end of this semester, your level of Critical thinking as well as creative thinking as well as communication is becoming better and better and better, inshallah. In fact, there's something else I would like to tell you that my you know, health condition is not that okay because, you know, I've got a blood pressure and sometimes, you know, 